You're listening to PetLifeRadio.com. It's Behave with Arden Moore, the show that teaches you how to have harmony in the household with your pets. Join Arden as she travels coast to coast to help millions better understand why cats and dogs do what they do. Get the latest scoop on famous faces. They're perfectly pampered pets in Who's Walking Who in Rin Tin Tinseltown. From famous pet experts and best-selling authors to television and movie stars, you'll get the latest buzz from wagging tongues and tails. Garner great pet tips and have a doggone fur-flying fun time. So get ready for the pause and applause as we unleash your all-behave host, America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Welcome to the All Behave Show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. First, I want to give pause and applause to all you loyal listeners who live all over the globe. At last count, more than 800,000 of you tune into this show each week. And speaking of being global, our special guest today is being Skyped from the other side of the world, from the wonderful land down under, Australia. That's right, mateys. Why, a few years back, he was named Australian Entrepreneur of the Year for people under age 30. And he's here today to discuss some creative solutions for a topic of great importance to all us pet lovers, proper potty pet etiquette. It gives me great pleasure to welcome the genius behind the creation of the Pet Lou, the one and only Toby Scovrun. Hey, welcome to the show, Toby. Hey, that's a massive wrap. Thanks so much for having me on the show. I was just thinking about it in my sleep last night, and I said, I got to do this man some justice. And you know what? <laughs> Toby and I, Toby, we get to be potty mouse on the show today. What do you think about that? Yeah, I get you to good? be potty mouse every day. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to be potty mouse for a good cause. And hey, folks, if you want your house to smell fresh and to give your cat and dog some wonderful bathroom options, then Toby is the guy to help. I want all of you to just sit and stay. We'll be right back after we take this commercial break. Time for a pause. Four furry ones actually sit and stay. All behave. We'll be right back. Petco, where the pets go. Pet Life Radio has tail wagging, fur flying, fabulous deals for our listeners from Petco. Get six dollars off your order of sixty dollars or more, and up to forty percent off the entire Petco site. That's right, but that's not all. Because you're a Pet Life Radio listener, you'll also get free shipping on your order of forty nine dollars or more. Six dollars off, up to forty percent off, and free shipping from Pet Life Radio and. Petco. To get these awesome deals, go to PetcoDeals.com. That's PetcoDeals.com. Petco. Where the pets go. I'm not much of a reader, but I do wish I were more well-read. There are so many great books coming out. I wish I could find a way to keep up. Audible.com makes it easy to stay well informed and catch up on your reading simply by listening. Audiobooks from Audible turn downtime into uptime. You'll be more productive and become well-read. Now I'm able to catch up on all the great books I've been wanting to read. With Audible, I feel smarter. Pet Life Radio listeners, try audible.com now and get your first 30 days of Audible Listener Gold Membership plan free. And get a free audiobook. Choose from over 100,000 titles. To get this great deal, go to audibledeals.com. That's audibledeals.com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. All Behave is back with more tail-wagging ways to achieve harmony in the household with your pets. Now back to your fetching host, America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Welcome back to the Old Behave Show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. Let me just say two words to all you listeners. Pee. Poop. Hey, did I get your attention? You know, when dogs and cats perform these bodily functions in the proper manner, we don't even give it a second thought. But when accidents happen in the house, it can cause a real stink in more ways than one. But here to help with some answers is our special guest, an entrepreneur with a global can-do reputation. Let's give it up for the CEO of the Pet Lou, Toby Skovron. Hey, Toby. I'm glad you're on the show. Yeah, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I like the accent, man. I, I guess it sounds like you're from Jersey. You know what? I don't have an accent. It's you guys oh. that have the accent. 
<laughs> yeah, touche, <No>. touche. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so where in Australia do you hail from? You know, I was born in Sydney, Australia. Um, for those that have been there, it's Bondi Beach, Sydney, Australia. And mm -hmm. uh, I grew up there uh, at 23 years of age. I moved a thousand kilometers, about 600 miles south um, to Melbourne, Australia. And then it was then and there that I realized I had a problem, one of many. <laughs> uh -oh. But I had a I had an opportunity to solve this one. And uh, right now, I'm dialing in from Melbourne, Australia, where we have our Australian operations. Okay. But I am based full-time, with the exception of this week and next. I'm based full-time in, in uh, Los Angeles, California. Okay. Now, tell me about why did you make the move to Melbourne back when you were the ripe age of 23? What was the uh, problem and the opportunity? <laughs> the problem was that I fell in love with this beautiful girl. Her name is and was or is Simone. <laughs> <laughs> she was my girlfriend at the time and uh, she was in college and I just finished. And so I moved to Melbourne to be with her and have her sp you know, finish her, her college degree. The goal was that we would spend six months in Melbourne and then six months in Sydney and work out where we were going to live forever and ever. And um, what ended up happening was we never actually did the six months in Sydney. I ended up spending six years in Melbourne. Um, oh. As part of my time here, um, Simone is a huge pet advocate. She's an animal assisted therapist. She was a vet nurse. Um, she has a degree in social work. She's very well qualified. She spent time as a kid in, in pet stores working at pet stores around Australia. And she taught me about the benefits of animal companionship. And I thought as, as a birthday gift, I would get her a dog. And that dog, is na her name was Subi or is Subi. And uh, Subi presented the problem. And the problem was that I wasn't fortunate enough to own my own house with a big backyard or even rent a house. So I, I rented a one-bedroom apartment, which fit my budget. And basically, that suited my lifestyle at the time. However, it didn't suit Subi's lifestyle. Subi being a, a, a young spoodle really oh, you had... Oh, you had me at spoodle. Come on, man. Tell the folks yeah. what the heck is a spoodle. A spoodle. A spoodle is a cocker spaniel crossed with a poodle. She's an F1 poodle mix. So mum was a purebred cocker spaniel and dad was a purebred poodle and together they made a spoodle. So that's different than a cockapoo, right? It is for a couple of reasons. Okay. One, a cockapoo is what a spoodle would breed with another spoodle. So that would be <laughs> what they call F2. Okay. So that's the mutt of the cocker spaniels and the poodle world, right? Yeah, correct. Okay. All right. I have just and learned so, something new, a spoodle. Hey, that's you know, so. every day. That's they right. Say. All right, um, so poor Subi wants to be a good doggy, but this one-bedroom rented apartment, what was happening? Well, let's not get into the details of Subi <laughs> being a good dog or a bad dog. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because she says she's a good dog, you know, 3 a.m., raining, freezing cold. I'm not sure that I'd agree with that. Okay. <laughs> um, however, the problem presented itself, and the eureka moment was, hey, Tobes, this is Simone, not Subi. Hey, mm -hmm. Tobes, we just need a patch of backyard on our balcony. And coming from an entrepreneurial family, that's sort of where the idea started. Okay. And uh, what you see today is where it sort of ended up. You have the backyard in a box, the pet loo. Correct. So please explain to our listeners. And everybody, it's real easy to go find a little more detail. You just go to thepetloo.com. And we do have to say that Toby is going to be kind enough to donate a loo to somebody that emails Arden at Four Legged Life and be the hundredth person to do so, and we're going to set you up with a pet loo for your pet too. Hey, that rhymes, Toby. How's yeah, there that? you go. Look, You're a oh, poet, and you didn't even know it. I know that's um, scary. There's a lot of things I don't know about myself yet, but <laughs> so tell us um, about the pet loo. So, as a pet would in it's in a normal backyard. The dogs do their business on grass. If they don't have a backyard, they probably demonstrate this in, on a nature strip down the street or alternatively mm -hmm. in a park. What I'm trying to get at here is that the essence of the product is a patch of grass, which underfoot feels like any patch of grass to the dog, which is something that they most often use as a surface to go toilet on. I mean, the exception to the rule is the pee pad, the dog that's been trained on pee pad. However, right. even some of them present, they understand, you know, to go toilet on grass when they're at a park or a nature strip. So underfoot, it feels like a, a normal piece of grass to the dog. Underneath it, we have a patented drainage and collection reservoir. And basically, the only way I've been able to describe this on radio is <laughs> it, it sort of looks like the George Foreman grill. 
Okay. I bet he's However, so happy that you're using that comparison. <laughs> I don't hey, this is the guy that named it. The, he named every kid after himself. So go ahead. Let's do a George <laughs> Foreman like grill comparison. Go for it. I just don't want him. I just don't want him to come after me. He's um, too old to beat you up now. Come on. Well, I, you know, I'm pretty fast, <laughs> but I think Good. I think George would uh, if he got me, I'd be in trouble. No, it's the only way I can describe it. There's no infringements of, of any description there. But um, it's the only way. It basically drains through and lands up in a collection reservoir so that it drains and collects so mm-hmm. that the uh, pet owner has a very easy and convenient way to empty and maintain the, the product. We are pretty lazy when it comes to potty maintenance, don't you think? we got to make it easy for people. Some people yeah. want to be able to sleep in. You know, sometimes the weather takes a curve that we don't like. And still, we don't want our pets practicing kegels, you know, trying to be able to hold it for another hour or two. That's not fair to them. <laughs> That's true. And really, the nice thing about what we've created is it's a very lightweight product. So, okay. you know, calling you from Melbourne, Australia, it's raining cats and dogs there you go yeah. there you uh-huh. go yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay so what you would do is you'd bring the pet loo in so that the dog could still do its business without um you know ruining the house now you touched upon something you you come from a family of entrepreneurs with a capital e so what's some of the things in the family tree if you will some creations or lines of work that your dad or mom or previous generations have been noted for yeah, so um, it all stems from my father. Okay. Um, father, w- unfortunately, is no longer alive. However, my dad would never have been as successful as he was if it wasn't for my mother. So okay. credit to her as well. Um, however, my dad was the type of guy that believed that there is always a better way to do something. And okay. if he's not going to do it, someone else is. And if someone else is going to do it, it's not going to be done to the level to which he would expect it to be done. My dad went out on his own. Um, he actually left school at, in uh, 10th grade and had an idea and ran with it. Ran a little too hard, unfortunately, mm-hmm. but um, he took a business global. Um, he was in the automotive industry. And, you know, growing up as a kid, the influence that he had on me was, you know, our house was turned into one of his workshops. Um, okay. Like, Called our lounge room a TARDIS, which mm-hmm. is like a free for, for crazy people, our entrepreneur. <laughs> okay. And so growing up, you know, sitting in the family home watching television, we had flow charts on the wall, um, we had prototypes, you know, on the coffee table, you know, diagrams and spreadsheets and you name it, we had it. And sort of growing up in that environment, being around that forever, I can't remember not having that in my life. It sort of paved the way for me to just kind of. The eureka moment of the pet loo came up and it was kind of like, you know, let's go get this. Let's go make this happen. It sounds like you got some parallel lives. I mean, because Simone is, it seems like, is much like what your mom is for your dad, wouldn't you say? She sounds like you met her at the right time in your life. And together with both of your backgrounds, it seems like it's a pretty good force. Yeah. You have. Uh, and, you know, I wouldn't be as balanced or where I am on a mental stability level. Uh, if it <laughs> Uh-huh. Okay. No, but what about your dad? Because you grew up in that environment, what were some of the things you said to yourself, I will make sure I never do this, I will avoid this? It's like sidestepping a landmine from a dog. What were some things from your dad that you learned, good and bad, that has helped you become who you are today in business? I think, firstly, my whole business vision is based on a packed sport. So mm-hmm. my absolute passion is basketball, and I run my company <laughs> like a basketball team. Oh, really? Um, <laughs> yeah, we have our starting five, you know, we have different a team with better skills to shoot the ball from the outside and, and better people that can work the inside and crash the board. So, um, you know, I run on, on a theoretical base that way and my, my team respond favorably to me. But I think it's all about, you know, healthy, being healthy and, and running a healthy lifestyle, which unfortunately, you know, I think that it's today that we know more about you know, healthy lifestyles and healthy habits. I think my father was caught up in a generation that didn't really understand that and sort of a cheeseburger a night or, you know, whatever fried food led to an unhealthy, imbalanced lifestyle. Right. I'll grab something on the go because I just need to put something in my mouth to keep going with my business idea Mm -hmm. as opposed to just stopping and just going, I need to do something better for myself. And I think that that's come with education around around health. So really, you know, I really focus on that. I spent 10 years as a personal trainer in, in corporate health environment. And, you know, I run my company 
in a similar fashion, and this may sound a little odd, but my guys have to do three one-hour training sessions a week. Otherwise, they get fined $100, <laughs> which sounds like a very <laughs> hard take. However, they're all very thankful for that, and they know the risk. The $100 is really insignificant if they don't go and do their exercise compared mm-hmm. to really not going and doing the exercise and, and, and sort of potentially spiraling into an unhealthy lifestyle. So we focus heavily on that for the, the team that I directly right. – um, right. and I think really the landmine now, that I try to avoid. Now, I used to work at Prevention Magazine in uh, Rodale Press, and they had a very similar philosophy. We had at any time during the day, we could go to the Rodale Press gym and work out. And if we worked out, we got these little Benny points and got prizes and all that. So they really rewarded you for taking the time to get away from the keyboard, step away from the keyboard and exercise all the muscles, your brain and your body. And as a personal trainer, don't you feel like sometimes when you're working out, everything just kind of clicks for to solve a business problem you've been facing, you know, sitting at a computer and looking at it, I don't know, doing some push-ups or running. Isn't it kind of clear the head a little bit to make you think more focused? Everything is so much better. Everything is so much clearer. It's hard, you know. Right now, I've been on a uh, four-week road trip. Um, I've been to New York, San Francisco, Chicago, Dallas, Tennessee. Oh, my gosh. um, Brisbane, Australia. Next week, I'm in Sydney, Australia. It's hard. However, if you don't take the time, you're the person that's going to suffer, you know. And um, if you suffer, then the business suffers, your family suffers, everything suffers around you. So, you know, I can't emphasize enough how important it is to exercise and, and do the right thing for yourself. Now, what about you've got two dogs? You talked a little bit about Subi, and Subi's got a kid brother named Cooper, but do they do puppy push-ups on command, or what kind of exercise do Subi and uh, Cooper do? I reckon Subi could pretty much outsmart me. Not that that's a difficult thing to do. She's so <laughs> rolled her and Cooper in um, agility. Um, mm-hmm. They're both animal actors. They've done a course in Los Angeles. Oh, my gosh. About how to act in front of the camera on commands with certain you know, tweaks and, and prompts from Simone, my wife. Uh-huh. Um, so, so they don't necessarily do push-ups, but you know, I walk them in the morning, they get walked at lunchtime, and we uh, do a family walk in the evening together. So they get enough exercise, that's for sure. You know, the family that walks together succeeds together, don't you think? We are, I think. <laughs> yeah, I think you are. <laughs> Hey, uh, folks, we're speaking with Toby Scovron. He is Scovron. Is that the right way? I go Scovron. Do it again. Call me. That's fine. No, I want to call you by your right name. Come on. Scovron? Perfect. Did you? No. Is that perfect? Awesome. All right. And uh, he is the genius behind the Pet Lou and more creations. But we're going to have to take a quick commercial break because we got to pay for this show. So you know the drill. Sit and stay. We'll be right back. Time for a walk on the red carpet, of course. All Behave will be back in a flash right after these messages. Every pet is unique. Maybe they're gray in the muzzle, yet young at heart. Maybe they're growing out of the puppy stage and into their paws and ears. Or maybe they're just trying to maintain a more girlish figure. At PetSmart, we have the right food for your pet at a great value for you. PetSmart. Be better together. Go to PetSmartDeal.com and save up to 30% on awesome gifts for the pets and pet people in your life. Toys, collars, leashes, PetSmart gift cards, treats, and more. Go to PetSmartDeal.com today. P-E-T-S-M-A-R-T-D-E-A-L.com. Dyson. The new Dyson Animal Backs are powerful bagless upright vacuums for homes with pets. Air muscle and radio root cyclone technology generates the strongest suction power to powerfully remove dust, dirt, and pet hair from the home or car. To order your Dyson Animal Vac, go to DysonDeals.com. DysonDeals.com to order your Dyson Animal Vac today. Dyson. Music to your ears. This year, Americans are expected to spend a jaw-dropping $36 billion on their pets. From lighted leashes to high-end spa products, the discriminating pet owner can find just about anything to pamper his or her pet. Hi, this is Michelle Fern. Join me every week for Best Bets for Pets, where we'll talk about the latest pet products and talk to the companies that make them. Best Bets for Pets. 
every week, only on PetLifeRadio.com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Hey, I'm Lou Wagner with Kids Against Animal Cruelty, and I encourage you to check out the lovely, incredible, awesome, fantastic Miss Arden Moore with her show, Oh Behave, on Pet Life Radio. We're back from the lot. Just checked the paper, and we had a record showing at the box. The letterbox, that is. Now back to Oh Behave. Here's Arden. Welcome back to the OB Have Show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. We've been chatting with my favorite Australian. I know there's a lot of famous Australian actors. But this guy is the real deal when it comes to coming up with some practical solutions for your dog and your cat. He is the creator of the Pet Lou. I'm speaking of Toby Scorun. And at Toby, you've got a, another person in your family we failed to mention. Let's talk that's, about your newest addition. That's because she's so brand new. It's sort of, you have to pinch yourself. <laughs> Her name is Madison Ellie Scorun, and she's my eight month old daughter. Oh, congratulations, Daddy. This is special. Tell us a little bit about Madison. Well, Madison is, um, well, she's a female, eight months old. <laughs> She doesn't drive yet. You know, she doesn't have a favorite. Does she have a Facebook page yet or a Twitter? She does not. She has her email address. How cute is this? My wife and I set up an email address for her. <laughs> okay. And once a month, we send her an email. Maybe it's a video or a picture of uh-huh. the activity that we did with her that month. Just oh, my to gosh. A bit of a, a real-time scrapbook when she's older. What a great idea. What a great idea. I like it. I like it. There's that genius working again in your mind. When yeah. she's a little bit, she'll open that up. She'll only get 12 emails a year. We only do one a month. Okay. And, and grandpa and, and, and on, the, on both sides of the family send emails to her or something or do something. So it doesn't get overloaded. But hopefully when she's old enough to read and appreciate it, she'll open it up, have a couple hundred emails and, and be able to you know, see her life over the years in real time. You know what? That's brilliant. I like that. You know, you should consider a career that involves thinking outside the box. I don't know. You've got to get out of this nine to five mindset. In a box. So you're saying <laughs> Yeah, you think outside the litter box and other boxes. I love talking about pee and poop. I jokingly am the expert on the three P's, pee, poop, and puke. And I went to Purdue University. So there's all the P's I got from my end. But when we're talking about indoors and the weather's inclement, or we have kitties that need litter that really doesn't foul up the smell in the house. Talk about some of the other things that you do at the Pet Lou and why you're really paying attention to the bathroom habits of dogs and cats. So the Pet Lou is where it started nearly nine years on, almost 10 years, uh, July 5, 2013, is Pet Lou the brand. Okay. Um, so Australia Lou is toilet or potty and <laughs> anything pet, toilet or potty, Lou related, We've made a name for ourselves around innovative, green, eco-friendly, safe for people, pets, and the planet technology. And it has to be solution orientated. Today, you know, we have nearly 20 items in our portfolio. Mm-hmm. In the next six, we'll double that to 40 items. Um, wow. One of our bellers right now is our fresh air cat litter by okay. Petlook. And, um, you know, when I talk about green technology, it's right there. It's made in the USA. And the difference between our cat litter and every other cat litter on the market is the problem with the smelly litter box is right. bacteria. Um, mm-hmm. Bacteria is smell, not necessarily the urine or the feces. And so we came up with an innovative solution with our cat litter. We are the only cat litter in the world that actively deals with bacteria. We have a patented carbon pad, which basically, for lack of a better word, suffocates the bacteria. A bacteria mm-hmm. needs oxygen to survive. Right. Right. So what we've infused our cat litter with carbon dioxide or CO2, which is completely safe. I mean, we're breathing carbon dioxide ourselves right now. And that ultimately suffocates the bacteria and prevents growth of Good. the bacteria. So our cat litter is made in the USA, like I said before, but it's, it's made from an eco-friendly material called zeolite. And that's a volcanic rock. So it's completely natural. It's inert. It's if you ingested it, you're completely safe. I know dogs. Some dogs eat the cat litter from their cat litter box if they've got like cat and dog ownership going on in under one roof. Those are the um, Snickers bars for the uh, the dogs in the house. Very graphic. Thank you. So it's completely safe if the dog was to ingest or the cat was to ingest our litter. And what we've got is a product that lasts twice as long as any other cat litter on the market. You don't have to tend to it. And the beautiful thing about what we've done is we wait for 
So we're not a bulky, heavy, you know, 35 pound litter bag. We've got a small size, which is nine pounds, and a large size, which is 14 pounds. And we last twice as long as any other cat litter on the market. I mean, it's absolute no brainer. Well, think um, about it. I mean, there's a lot of folks that have back issues that they're, you know, you're a personal trainer, you know, some folks are older and the heaviest thing in caring for a pet, especially a cat, is lugging that litter bag home or the litter bucket home. Seriously, you want to hire like Arnold Schwarzenegger to come by and drop off your litter. And if you live up on stairs and you got to carry it upstairs, because you know you're supposed to have a litter box in every level of your house to uh, help your kitty, that's a real problem for some folks. Absolutely. We've really made a super friendly solution that weighs less, costs less, and lasts twice as long. And, you know, the people that are on our litter are are just loving it. And, you know, it's very hard to innovate and sort of restructure something that exists for ages and ages, you know, cat litter, clumping cat litter. You know, these things have been around since, you know, 40s, 50s, and 60s. And to come out in 2011, 2012 with fresh air, it really is the, the new age cat litter. Well, you know, I know you got inspired by Subi, but the bottom line is, unfortunately, you know this, is that sometimes cats and dogs get surrendered to shelters because they're not doing the uh, proper potty habits that the folks that uh, they live with want. And there's a responsibility for on our shoulders too. But I think in a way, don't you think you're maybe saving some lives and keeping some pets in good homes? No, we are. And we're, we're doing that more than just from a toileting perspective. You mm-hmm. know, there's a lot, unfortunately, that got hit. In the global financial crisis, they downsized from these beautiful big homes with big palatial backyards to small mm-hmm. condo or small townhouses, and there was no room or no space for the dog style or that environment. Uh, mm-hmm. Alternatively, people that live in nursing homes, grandma or grandpa are in nursing homes, they've had a dog forever and a day. The benefit of animal companionship you know firsthand is amazing. Um, right. And when to go into these nursing homes, they want to take their dog with them. And then there's other people that love, you know, a beautiful dog or a cat in their life. But, you know, they live downtown New York City and really there's sort of New York City is a tough place to have a dog. So I believe that the pet loo emotionally satisfies those sort of demographics. You know, there's sorts of that versatility. But I know ASPCA, the RCA, the Humane Society, we are definitely trending as a way to decrease the amount of dogs that are being surrendered with our solution-orientated products. It's These guys are reporting it firsthand, which is an amazing feeling. That is, and that's why we have you on the show, because we didn't want just somebody talking about a product. You actually have something that is doing your part to keep that human-animal bond as strong as it can be. I mean, Chipper Cleo, Murphy, and Ziki, my two dogs and two cats, have come from either shelters or from the streets. And I can't tell you how many things that they have done to benefit my life and fill my heart and to have solutions instead of problems. I mean, I think you have an attitude that I want to become infectious all across the globe. We need to come up with ideas. It's easy to say what the problem is, but it takes someone of your your stature to come up with a solution. I appreciate the kind words. You know, when I first opened this radio interview, I, I mentioned that my wife, She's an animal therapist. She's also a, a qualified social worker. And she mm-hmm. used to Cooper when we lived here in Australia, not so much in the U.S. at the moment, but she's going to get back into it after, you know, Madison gets into her sort of routine. Um, she right. used to take Cooper to hospital and, and work with her elderly patients. And the sort of stories that she would come home with and the benefits that her patients were receiving because Subi and Cooper specifically um, with her situation came into their life with those patients on a daily basis is the reason why I run the company, is the Mm -hmm. reason why what I'm doing, the success and sort of, you know, the life being able to live as a result of that is secondary to the goal. And the goal is to break down the barriers to animal companionship and increase the animals being owned because the benefits are phenomenal. Well, I've been delighted to have you on the show. I hope someday when you get back to L.A., I'm in Oceanside, so we're not that far apart. I would love to meet you and Simone and Madison, Cooper and Subi. And uh, I've got a couple of dogs that actually surf and uh, a cat that goes all over the place being the only pet first aid cat in the country. She lets you do anything to it. So it would be an honor to get to meet you and uh, have a little fun. Sounds great. Okay. And uh, everybody, he's given away a pet loo to the 100th listener who emails me, Arden, 
at Four Legged Life with the code words the Petlu. I want you guys to dash over to thepetlu.com and find out what this guy is all about and look at the over 20 different items that he has created that is breaking down that barrier when it comes to the human animal bond. Toby, anything you want to say before we uh, bid adieu? No, it's a pleasure. It's been an absolute pleasure being on the show. Uh, thank you for all that you do and the world is a better place with you and the publicity that you do on your show. It's great. Well, we're here to help our people and our pets and uh, keep that potty habits in good steed. Everybody go to thepetloo.com and Toby, thank you so much for being a guest on our show. And at this time also, I got to salute my producer, Mark Winter. He makes this show happen each and every week, along with all the other shows on the Pet Life Radio Network. He has orchestrated a network of 6 million strong in listeners. That's not a little kibble, wouldn't you say, Toby? That's not bad, huh? That's amazing. He's a genius in his way, too. And everybody, you know the drill. I want to tell you, thank you again, Toby, for being on the show. I want you guys to dash over to thepetloo.com. Try to win this Petloo. If you have any issues with your pet, when it comes to the bathroom issues, go to the site because they have a lot of questions and answers and they address some of the common things that happen with our dogs and cats and some practical solutions so that you can keep your pet in this home and it's a win-win for all. So until next time, this is your flea-free host, Arden Moore, delivering just two words to all you two, three, and four-leggers out there. Oh, behave! Coast to coast and around the world, it's All Behave with Arden Moore. Find out why cats and dogs do the things they do. And get the latest buzz from wagging tongues and tails in Rin Tin Tinseltown. From famous pet experts and best-selling authors to television and movie stars, you'll get great tail-wagging pet tips and have a fur-flying fun time. All Behave with America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.